Back to the 18th century? Kinda? For a few minutes? Let's have a look. Welcome back to the shop and the channel and kind of doing a little modification to an 18th century box. Before we do this, this picture, the fan is in place and literally this, the humidity in that room is exactly the same as any other room on the first floor. So it worked out really well. Now, onto the box. As I mentioned earlier in um, some of my videos, my wife and I do 18th century Highland, Highlanders uh, living history. Uh, specifically the Jacobite Rebellion of 1745. If you've watched Outlander at all, we're, I think, around season three. That's, that's us. But we do a hyper-accurate presentation of garb and materials, but we don't do first person. So this is a cookbox that we use when we're on an encampment. We carry our cooking gear in here, utensils and whatnot, like we're on the road, whatever. And Mara did not make this as I thought. This is actually a purchase box. But what she wants is, is a till that goes across here like this, about five inches wide and about four and a half inches deep, four inches deep, here and here. And um, so I have to put rails on the inside of the box here and here. And I've, I've cut the rails out. And they got a taper on them for, you know, being up against here and not catching things. I've rough cut out the sides. And the ends was one of these is going to be the ends of the box, and uh, it's half inch material, uh, as I had before. Now Mara would like dovetails, not a problem. So I'll be dragging out the uh, lead dovetailing jig again, and cutting some dovetails, and I'll do a, as best a description I can do, because I've, I've been planning to do a, a deep dive on the lead jig. There's a lot of deep dives out here on YouTube on the lead jig. I just wanted to do a deep dive in the things I found out about it. Now I've got a D3, older, 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 it's like 30 years old, but I've updated it with some stuff. So let's get these cut to length and put the cleats in place. My two rail pieces, and basically all you do is take it, put it in the box and mark the end where the cut's gonna be. Simple, simple, simple. Let me take care of cutting trimming these off now and I should get yep doesn't that's that's gonna go there and the other one's gonna go over here and like I said it's got the taper on it the 45 and that's gonna go downward so it's facing up is a flat like that now the next thing to do is to mark these these depths and I've got it I've got a mark here I'll put a ruler in here you know, with a thingy you know the um, square uh, combination square and mark several places where this is going to get glued and pinned in place. So let's do that. Now over here, this back is lower than the side, and the reason being that this this lid is an old style wooden hinge pin, a uh, pinned hinge, so it has to be able to rotate back without grabbing this, 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 this board that's actually on the back here. So I take my, 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 this is the height I have to measure from, and that's where my measurement's going to be from, not from the back. Double check. Yep, there. There. And what I'm going to do is take a little piece of wood and lengthen that a little bit. So I know where it's going to go. All right, so I've marked front and the back. I should have stuck the camera in here, but that's okay. You know what's going on. And now I'm going to glue and pin these in place. The marks are for the top of the rail. So you can line that up with the piece of wood and pin it in place. Now I got to get make sure I get the pin, the right pinner, the pin. I don't want to come through the front here. This is only a quarter inch piece of plywood, and the builder made it with plywood for weight savings. So let's uh, let's get let's get that kind of going on. 
Well, I don't have any in-between pins. The pins I have would just kind of come out the surface here. So once I pin this in place, I have to pin it in at an angle, you know, put the pin in at a slight angle so it doesn't come shooting out the front of the back. But let's put some glue. And this is the way it's going to go like this, flat up, flat against the back and the taper on the bottom. Get that on the line, right there. The, those are the cleats right there on either side. They're going to hold the till that I'm going to put in. The till will not have a cover. It's just going to be a box we throw in here, and you can put stuff in it. Probably just utensils and whatever. Mara could tell you better. So now it's got a cure. Now we got to work on the dovetails for the box, the, the, the till. The lead jig is uncorked and on the bench. Um, had to do a few things to it uh, before I started using it this time. One was I had to replace a couple of fingers for the, uh, the jig, uh, the guides. And for some reason, I don't understand how this happens, but occasionally a router bit somehow contacts is, these uh, guides and damages them and you got to replace them. Weird. Uh, don't worry about it. These are aluminum. Your router bit is typically carbide. This will not damage a carbide bit unless you're really, really aggressive. Uh, there's this peel and stick sandpaper here and here to hold the wood. I've had instances where a large piece of wood will slip if it's not clamped correctly. This gives you a nice bite to hold the piece of wood in place. Um, the router I highly recommend a single router, or if you can afford it, two routers, and I'll show you why in a minute, for the jig only. And the reason being is that guide collar from Lee and the router collet have to be absolutely concentric. I mean, really, really concentric. The reason is that you'll get gaps, if they're not, between the tails and pins. And you can get things like this which is for, for aligning collets and things and stuff and guide, guide bushes in routers. There's quite a few different ones like this out there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cut the through dovetails for the uh, till. The other thing I highly recommend is getting the VSR dust collection. This really works very well. It sits right here. Helps with the router because the router can slide along it. Um, and I've got this connected to a eye socket switch over here. So I turn the router on, the dust collection comes on. So there, there's that. So first thing we need to do is set up the jig for the pattern that I want for my dovetails. Now the dovetails are cut with the 80 dove, dovetail bit, number 80. This is their number, number 80 or number 88. The 80-8 is, is, um, uh, is metric in the shaft, and the 80 is, is, um, uh, is SAE English, whatever, in, in, in the shaft. I've got their uh, collet in here to grab this, so this is the, mil this is the uh, metric shaft. Oh, uh, here we go. Here's another one I've got. This one's metal, actually. This is a better one. I'll see if I can find out where I got these, and I'll put them in the... Uh, Put it in the description. So let's uh, let me bring the camera, stick it over the top, and I'll show you what I need to do to get this set up. First thing I did was set it with the 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 uh, pinned fingers facing toward me. The workpiece. This is all the way down. This guide is all the way down. You set this scale here, and I'll show a picture of that to the half inch mark on both ends, and that's just for reference. So then you're going to set up the what you want. So you want, I want about a oh, quarter inch, a little more than a quarter inch from the end. And how many tails and pins do I want? So let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do three. And I can adjust these infinitely, of course. So 
So I set that one the same distance. So now I've got my uh, pins the way I want my pins set up, but I want to move them a little bit to make it a little more. Let's move this, this, do this, do this one, move this one out just a little bit. See, I'm scooting it over just a little bit. So these gaps are pretty much very close, actually. Move this one over just a little bit. So these are symmetric. Tighten it down. And then you want some fingers over here for the router to move out on because the router is going to come over as we get cut this one here. And that's just for the router to ride on. Now I'm going to set up the workbench over there so eventually I can just mount this up on the workbench and we can get better camera angles on it. But I'm up against the grinding bench over here and I can't get the camera back here, so we'll do that. So here's my pins. The tails are going to be kind of small. That's, that's good. I like that. So now what I would do is to go to cut the pins is you flip this over and set up the router to make the cuts. Let me, let me get that done. So it's pretty much set up now. Um, I have a backer board. It helps prevent blowout back here. The fingers are turned flipped end to end, so now I can do the tails. Uh, pins come later. Then um, what I need to do is mark the depth of the cut. See, this is up against the fingers. The fingers are resting on the, the, the backer board, and then you drop the fingers down, the guides down, then you bring the workpiece up to the guides. And now I take the other side, the one of the corner ends, and mark a line. So that... Can't see it? That's the depth of cut I want. I'm going to go ahead and set the router up, and then we can start doing some cutting. I adjusted the router depth to so the, the, the router bit will just split that line in half. So you basically take the router, put it up in place, and then you adjust it. It's hard to see with no light. You adjust it so that router bit just splits that line in half. If you want to go a little deeper, you can, so you can clear off the stock. This will give me very nice fit, uh, and then I can go ahead and sand to finish to get it exactly where I want it. This should almost be exactly where I want it, because I'm kind of used to using this jig a little bit. Have the dust collection in place. Let's see. Um, you route these. won't be able to say anything when it's running. You route these from left to right when you got them all cleaned out. You flip the board over, over, and do it again. So I'm going to do all both ends of the long pieces with this setup. So bring the router up, get it in place, and then make sure that that the uh, what I'm doing is making sure that this is actually level with this, and the router plate is square on front to back. That's a that's thing you got to watch for. So this is set to one and one, because we're just doing the uh, the tails. And let's put on the music. La musica, la musica. Real quick, the bit for the um, the uh, pins is a, is a straight bit because we're going in at angles like this. So you can see that I have the the uh, 
the um, fingers turned over. I flipped it over, set it to the half inch depth, which is the thickness of the wood. And these are my 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 uh, my ends. What I forgot to mention is, you route the inside of the box like so, and then you mark you mark this in. You take the outside, you mark it like so, and you rotate it, and then the inside of the box goes in, and the outside of the box goes out. So you mark it the in the inside and the outside. So this is this has got to be faced the inside of the box. This one has got to face the outside of the box. And it's the same process. I route, I flip, I route, and I do the other one. So I'm going to, oh, I just also did a test piece to make sure it was correct. So I put those over there, put up this up here into the jig. And just like before, I've got a backer board and I did test cuts and everything's ready to go. Dust collector's in place and this is all set. So, ugh. Like I said, at some point in the future, I'm really going to do a deeper dive on this thing. If people want it anyway. We'll see. Up high where you can see it, there it is. Dovetail box, dovetail box, and it, it basically sits right in here. It slides very nicely with enough room for growth or whatever back and forth. Now we have to put the bottom on it and we'll be done. And the bottom is going to be a different different thing altogether. I'm going to do, a, I, have, I have about router bits for cutting the groove in here. And then I'll do a raised panel thing, stick it in here. We'll glue it all together, stick it in the box, and Mara has her till. Now I have to cut the groove in the Ordato in the bottom of the box to accept the bottom of the box. Did that make any sense? Anyway. Um, I think you've seen me use these before. If you watch my videos, this is a little bit that's designed specifically for that purpose. It's a quarter inch by quarter inch. So I raised this up um, so the bottom of the of the cutter is a quarter inch from the base. You turn the router on, you stick this over it, and you run the box all the way around and you get your groove. Yeah, there's, there's round corners in the inside. You can either chop those out or you can round the corners of the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and, and I'll show you me doing that. And here we go. So I got the parts all fit together. Um, I kind of rounded the corners on this to fit inside here, and I chipped out some of the wood here to make it fit even better. Now the way it needs to be assembled, because of the way I did the dovetails, is um, interesting. It's, you'll you'll feel, see when I get started. So I want to get these things in the right place. And for the inter in the interest of working time, I'm using the uh, room temperature high glue again, like I did on that uh, cat chest of drawers I made for myself. Cover these nicely. You don't need a lot. This is not going to have a whole lot of load on it as it as it uh, sits in the world. Okay, that goes there. And now this one. We'll go here. Just double check. Yep. Let me see what's going on here. I'm gluing, doing the gluing thing. Yeah, the, this, we call it old brown glue. It's basically a room temperature high glue. And high glue would have been, you know, correct for the period of this piece. But um, it gives you a lot better working time. Okay, and now I spread this apart just a little bit and slide the right the panel in like so. Close it up. Nope, don't close it up. Leave it open. Put some glue on here on these joints here. Uh, Mara is doing some work outside of the front of the house. That's why you're hearing my my ring camera going off. So there's that, and I want to turn this around, put this in here, put this in here, and tap these together.
and you clean up with water is real easy. So there it is. There's the race panel bottom, interior of the box. Got some sanding to do, but we're done. We succeeded in making a till for our box. So anyway, um, next project's going to be interesting. I'm going to use a chemistry from a long time ago on a, on a, to update a project that I built years ago. So anyway, until next time, of course, make great things out of wood, do some dovetails, make a till for a box, whatever. See ya.